Good morning. Welcome to 7 for 7. Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We choose to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Now, Lord, have your way as you minister to us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm excited. Here is the last Monday of 2021. And I want you to begin to reflect and to shift on some things because God is preparing us for something greater. But there may be some things that you might need to adjust, some things you need to put into place as we move forward in 2022. And I want to think about this, you know, because, you know, we're the body of Christ. We are a social organization that um, for nearly the last two years, 20, 22 months, uh, we have been a social organization that could not quite be as social as we would like to be. But I believe this, and I believe that prophetically God is positioning the church to uh, make a comeback, a comeback in so many different directions and dimensions. I believe that you need to begin to pray and prepare yourself to walk in the newness and, 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 and see some aggression flowing through the church um, starting in the spring. You know, by the end of the spring, we're going to see some powerful things begin to ha happen in the church. So first of all, I want, to think, I want you to think about this. You know, you know, we need, if you will, as individuals, we need to plug and play or be connected and submitted. And so we need membership. We need discipleship, partnership, stewardship, sonship, fellowship, and lordship. Now listen to this. Everyone in the body of Christ, right, needs to be a member someplace. But there's some people, that's all they are. They're members. They're never pastored. They're never committed. They never serve. You know, Acts 2 and, 4, 4 and 47 helps us to understand we need to be in a place where we can have membership. But then, you know, it's not enough to be just having mem membership, but we must come to the place that we are being able to be what? Uh, discipled. We have to have discipleship. John um, 8, 31, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. So we have to continue in his word. That means, that means that you need to encourage and amp up your word. That means that you have to press in to seek the very face of God. And you need to allow yourself to be discipled. The disciple is to be a follower of. But, you know, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. God wants to take us to a place that we're not just disciples, but that we will grow. First, you start off as a disciple, but then he wants you to grow because the charge to the body of Christ is to become disciple makers. And then after that, then there is partnership. And in Luke uh, 5 and 7, it says, if you don't do your part in church, you won't feel your part. I mean, you know, in, in, in essence, if you don't do your part, in church. You won't feel your part. So many of you feel disconnected. And I know that even if we are um, not to the fullness of what we've always done, there's still some things that you need to do. So you must, it is imperative on you that you begin to do your part. What could be your part? Are you praying for your pastor? Are you praying for your other church members? Have you been giving, if you will, to support the mission and the cause, right? I need you to do your part. And when you do your part, you feel a part, right? That's part of what made uh, the greatest generation the greatest generation, right? Talking about the baby boomers, when they, when, when World II came, everyone did their part, right? That was the one pivotal moment when the more women went to the workforce and never came back because we needed everyone to do their part. Let me tell you something. This is that same kind of thing. This is a spiritual worldwide war, war and we need to do our part so that we can feel our part and then we begin to reap the, 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 the victory, if you will, together. Amen? <clears throat> and then 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. In 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, <coughs> two 
it helps us God it helps us to know that 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 we must now it is imperative that we become good stewards right of what what we have or what God has given us you know a lot of people as this pandemic began they did not take the time to reduce their debt right they just they just lived and 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 and, and you know some spent but a lot of them just consumed what they got. We have to be uh, good stewards, which means if you're going to be a good steward, first of all, you got to be a giver. You got to tithe, and then not only do you have to tithe, but then you need to save. So you need to give ten percent, the first ten percent, and then you need to save ten percent. And if you can save ten percent, you're doing very well. And then you can live off the rest, or you can give your offerings out of the rest, right? But you see, God wants us to be good stewards, and I want you to get out of debt. It is imperative that you get out of debt. You can make better decisions if you get out of debt. You know, you can't be, uh, you won't be bullied to do certain things if, if, if you get out of debt, right? And then there is, in Philippians 3.14, helps us to understand that there's a high calling of God. And that high calling of God brings us to a place of sonship. And God wants you to operate in sonship, not just to be a child of God, not just to be a child in the kingdom, but a son, if you will, operates with certain authority. A certain son operates with certain confidence because they know who they are. And I want you to operate in that sonship. And then, of course, we, we have to be very unique in terms of how we function and flow, but we need to step out in an uncommon ways and make it intentional that we would get fellowship. Acts 4.32 helps us to understand that we need fellowship, right? And, 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 and we would have those things common so that we could find those things where we could connect and to have that fellowship to encourage one another along the way. And then, of course, Luke 6.46 helps us to understand that we need lordship. In other words, not just save us from hell, but we need to allow him to lead, guide, and direct us. Will you, will you allow these dimensions? if you will, to continue. See, this is a kingdom word. This is preparing us to be kingdom people. We need that membership, that discipleship, that partnership, that stewardship, that sonship, that fellowship, lordship. If you don't let him be lord of, of all, he won't be lord at all. Let him be lord of all that concerns you. Will you be blessed, and I'll see you next time at 7 for 7. Have a good day.